you call cheese that isn't yours? Nacho cheese. That's right, tonight we're gonna have nachos for dinner. I know you're thinking they're an appetizer, but ultimately they're meat, vegetables, and just hard tortillas. They're basically a deconstructed taco for all you hipsters out there. But that's what we're having tonight. So we're gonna start by making our chicken. We've got two chicken breasts. We're gonna bake them. We're gonna season them, bake them. And then we're gonna shred them up. And I'll show you the easiest way to shred meat. You already know it's coming on there. Why anyone would act surprised? There's our garlic. There's some chili powder. A little bit breaker. Just a little bit. Then some cumin. Trying to use this one if I got another one. I hate to waste. That just occurred to me I forgot the olive oil. Which is why I'm like any real amateur just at home chef. Because we're always like, oh yeah, that thing. So we've got it all there. Gonna mix it all up. I don't know if you heard that beeping, but that means that our oven is preheated to 400 degrees. You'll see, lined the cookie pan already. I know it doesn't seem like it's super seasoned. We'll add some more after we shred it. We just kind of want a base seasoning on there. Gonna kind of place it. This little bit that randomly detached itself. Don't really know how. So we're gonna put it in the oven. This is gonna be the longest part, so that's why we start with this. We're gonna check on it in about 15 minutes, maybe 20 if they're a little thicker. And then we'll flip them and do that all over again. So we're gonna pause you guys before we move on to the next bit of our homemade nachos night. All right, so now we're gonna make kind of a pico base for what we're gonna put on our nachos. Because all the veggies, no real preservatives, be really good. So we're gonna kinda angle you back down. All right, everything has been washed. Just in advance, we're gonna start with our jalapeno. You do wanna be careful when you cut, because if you cut while you cut the jalapeno, you are gonna, <laughs> it does not feel good. I did it one time, I was much younger. And it was very painful, especially because immediately it was a bad cut, so I had to put something on my finger. <laughs> but then it trapped all the jalapeno juices in there, and it was like, oh, I'm hurting from the cut, and I'm hurting from all this capsaicin that we have trapped inside my cut. So I recommend being very careful and remembering that if you want it spicier, you're gonna keep more seeds. If you want it less spicy, you're gonna have less seeds or no seeds, depending. Some people wear gloves when they cut their uh, peppers just to avoid it. Otherwise you do need to wash your hands really well, which we're all doing right now anyway, because none of us wanna get sick. These seeds are just going everywhere. Okay, all right. I like it a little spicy, so I don't mind if one or two stay, but one time I was like, oh, I'm just gonna do all of them because it won't be that bad and I really like spice. And that was too much. It was too much because you know it gets spicier the longer it sits. And I made a really big batch. By the end of it, it's just Sean's, just Sean's salsa by then. It's nobody else's. I couldn't eat it. There we go. Get all those seeds off. That's the goal. Can leave the membrane part. There we go. I want those seeds off. All right. that in there so don't want to waste. All right, before I go cut anything else, I am gonna throw this out and wash my hands really well, so I'm gonna pause you guys. All right, so we are back. We're gonna get the rest of our vegetables ready to go into the food processor too. They won't all go in at once. That way we can add as we want. So we 
these red onion and get that top peel off. I just don't like how it winds up tasting the end of it all. It's the outer skin layer. It's the layer that took one for the team, knowing this would inevitably happen. All right. Very firm onion. Right. Not to chop too much, thankfully, because food process is going to do that for us. Highly recommend getting one if you do not have one. It's a sincere time saver. All right. Take this layer off. We won't need all the onion. Just going to cut up the parts I think we're going to need. And then. The rest of it we'll put away. Put it over to the side, but put it in a zip lock in a little bit. All right, so there's the onion. Then we've got our tomatoes. Again, not sure we're going to use all of them for the pico base, but we might make a bit of salsa with the rest. Kind of have the options. I wonder if we'll do the salsa tonight. Pico will go pretty well on the nachos. That'll be good. Just kind of see it and the consistency of them, the way it mixes up, that's going to be kind of up to you how much you like of everything. This is just kind of my base and the ingredients I put in mine. So you make it your own. The nachos just sounded good. Sean's quite excited. So one of my friend's kids making them on one of our Zoom meetings the other day, and I bought nachos. Haven't had those in a while. Because, you know, I typically just get them at restaurants and can't do that. So let's mix it up. Let's have a, you know, similar base, but a little different. All right. Move these out of the way unless we need them. Let's save you for a little bit, too. All righty. Pull it out, you know it's going to get loud. You want to mix a little bit of garlic in there too. And really and truly you do, it is an ingredient in salsa. I'm not just the crazy garlic lady, but maybe I am. Maybe I am the crazy garlic lady. Alright, so just going to add a few of our things. We might have to chop in kind of sections. Depends on how big and capable your uh, food processor is. I typically wind up doing it in a couple little sessions and then just stirring them all really well in my bowl. And then I'm twisting the wrong way. All right, guys, you know it's about to be loud. each vegetable on its own, however you want to. Back in there. you like it, I suppose. 
knows that we like it. So that's good. Again, kind of to taste, whatever tastes good to you. It works for us. All right. The other thing we're making, it's going to be a little bit of guacamole. Gonna cut it open. Cause how else do you get to the good stuff? Yeah. How about? Oh, I didn't cut it quite along the line. Let me redo that. My not. Why aren't you separating? I swear, if you're all seed, I'm going to be so mad. Okay. Alrighty. Maybe we should refrigerate avocados. Maybe that's the way. But this tool's fun. You can get the seed out. If you haven't accidentally overchilled your avocado, which clearly I have done. So we're going to maybe let it sit for a minute. <laughs> Give me a sec. Hi, it just occurred to me, I hadn't turned you guys back on. We're just cutting the avocado. It's a little harder. <laughs> Kept it in the fridge. It occurs to me, I don't think I really do that too terribly often. I don't know what I was thinking. I just made my job a little harder. But that's okay. It does mean that this is instead of going to get done by hand, Softening a little, just not a lot, means that this is probably going to go in the food processor, too. And that's okay. That's why we have such things, to make our lives a little easier. Yeah, oh, it's still pretty cold. Okay. So you're all going to learn from my mistake, right? No avocados in the freeze fridge. <laughs> Freezer might be bad. Really bad. But this was just the fridge. This was not stamped. After you cut them up, that's when they need to go in the fridge. If you're going to save them. Kind of remember. Okay. Alright, let me go grab the food processor again. Alright. We're going to do in there because it needs something to be a little softer. We're going to do lemon. I know a lot of people do lime. I have found in my years of experimenting with all these things, Lemon actually keeps the avocado fresher than the lime does. So I do lemon juice. There we go. All right. Like I do, totally fine. 
totally up to you. It will take longer if they are in larger chunks. So I do recommend just a little bit of pre-cutting. Just getting it a little bit down. All right. There we go. I got a fat that I don't want to be off. That one. And do the same with this one. So here, I'll wait till our back. All right. So the easiest way to shut up chicken or meat like this is get in the bowl. You got your hand mixer. That's good while it's still hot. It's no more valuable. A little less stiff. You don't want to start off too high, because then it'll just kind of fly everywhere. So that'll break it down more and more. And as it breaks down more and more, you can increase your speed if you want to. But this, this is such a time saver. And it saves your arms, too. nicely that's shredding up I'm trying to like let you guys see there we go see just shredding up all that chicken and once the chicken's shredded we can construct our nachos It does kind of start flying when you get it at a higher speed, so you kind of have to protect. So we're ready for our tacos. I'll pause you. All right, we are assembling our nacho. I'm using some blue corn chips because I like them better. Start with your base. All that. I'm gonna add some of our chicken to it. Yep. It's all about layering. The layering. That's what's that's what's important on your tacos. Not your tacos. <laughs> your nachos. They're deconstructed tacos. That was my joke. I'm sure there actually is a restaurant out there that has nachos that are described as deconstructed tacos. You just know it. Somewhere out there. In Hipsterville. Alright, so we've got that. We've got some cheese. Looking good. Alright, so what you can do is you can keep layering this up and heat if you want to melt it. We might actually do just a couple layers. It is dinner. Oh. Maybe not the healthiest, but keeps us happy and that's
little bit more. I like my salt, so we'll do some of our guac on there. Looks good. Some of it fell out. Toss it back up there. And then, every true Memphian knows you need some kind of good melty cheese. You need the good melty cheese, cheese dip on there. Of course, it's ponchos, white. What else would a good Memphian do? Ponchos cheese dip is the bomb. I'm just, just going to do one more. Just a little bit more, guys. Yeah. Alright, and then our nachos are ready. Enjoy. We'll see you tomorrow.